a movie. Hello and welcome to Meanwhile in Ludo City, uh, the second part of the Card City Nights walkthrough. I'm Anton. I'm Joel. I'm Matthias. I'm Nils. I am Daniel. Yeah, so hopefully we're a bit a bit better research this time. So actually, uh, maybe we should start by saying what, what we're doing, even if it's part two, if someone um, is new to this, what is yeah. this? Um, we're going through Card City Nights. Right. Uh, location by location. Sort of a director's commentary on a DVD. Yeah. Something like that. Um, we left off after the uh, hunk bump bar. Mm -hmm. And after that you go to the skate park. Yeah, there's an intermission there. Yeah. Uh, there's no boss or anything. Uh, so in the skate park there's a tall skater who is E.G. Mm. Yeah, the main character from E.G. Um, there are a number of references, actually. Um, the holes in our helmet um, are the AG logo. Um, and there's a picture, if you look closely, on our skateboard that um, sometime before the, uh, the game was released in 2008, uh, Joel actually drew a sprite that, was, uh, that remained in the final game. Uh, it's a poster that's extremely hard to find with a picture of ah, a so, yes. of a I guess rabbit with a <laughs> human mouth and mm. it says Sienast <laughs> that's uh, that's on her skateboard. Right. I remember this vaguely. So that was that was a really difficult to find secret area, right? In um, AG, yes, yeah. it's extremely hard. And you had like four, six, eight posters that you can find and collect in a room yeah. or something. And you drew one of them as right. a, a joke. Right. And that one is painted on her skateboard in mm. CC. Awesome. Uh, and when you talk to EG, uh, she's, uh, her personality is a bit different from in EG itself, I guess. Actually... Uh, or is this like uh, how, what EG would have been like if everyone wasn't killed? <laughs> she's, actually, she's one of the only characters who is more like what she would actually be like. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she plays off of a um, rude skater, um, Jenny, um, Frog? Jenny Frog. Jenny Frog, a uh, rude skater, is, uh, well, more rude, and uh, E.G. is sort of uh, a counterpart who is more, uh, more mature and collected, um, which um, creates an interesting dialogue between them. So why did Jenny Frog became, become rude in this game? Um, I don't know. I think it's if you look at her card in Little Do One, uh, she's already has that kind of urban kind of attitude. Uh, she has the graffiti in the background. Right. Yeah, and she has the the graffiti from Little Do One. Didn't you say? I remember you even saying that uh, like Jenny Frog may tag the yeah, wall. Yeah. So uh, there are also skateboards in Little Do One, and Jenny yeah, Fox exactly. broke her skateboard. Right. So they they have skateboards, they do graffiti, and it says she'd uh, stick it to the man if he wasn't paying her or something like that. It's a badass. Um, and uh, the, the, the graffiti you need to do one. Uh, there's a secret part of the castle where you can see it. Mm -hmm. the graffiti. Yeah, it's, it's, says, yeah, it's, a, it's supposed to say Jenny, but for some reason I drew the J the other way around, so it says Lenny. <laughs> and that's why a character in Italy 2 is named Lenny. So yeah, yeah. check that out. And That's also, pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> uh, it, it also, this is one of those references that only one person will get, so I'm okay with adding it. Um, Mia, a um, small boss um, who is Tall Skater's little sister, is more interested in basketball cards than Cards of Tonight's cards. This is a reference to um, an EG MS Paint adventure, um, which I think didn't have a name. Um, it, someone made it on a forum and it was extremely long, like 4,000 pictures or something. And um, the whole thing opened with uh, uh, Mia standing in uh, their house and uh, it said that uh, she was interested in basketball, which is ironic because uh, she's the shortest one in the house. Hmm. So so these two characters have the same relationship in Card City Nights yes. Energy, right? Yes, um, and Tall Skater spoils uh, her little sister a lot. 
So mm -hmm. they're yeah, the only characters who, for some reason, didn't go through a change. But but in a way they're very different because yeah, of because different circumstances. Mia doesn't have a personality in Egypt because she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a chance to uh, sort of explore them. So she was a brat even in Egypt. <laughs> Uh, well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is now. It's it's canon now. Mm. Uh, so, what is the, does this area have a really cool song or something? I know Matthias. No, this, this music is it's just using the, the one that's uh, for the outside of the game. So oh. there's a few maps that are like uh, outside on the streets and that's the because, same track. So. Because you're like a kind of, you used to be like a skater kind of guy, so I thought maybe you'd put something. Especially. I don't know if I knew that this skate map would be a thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know when when was it made in the. Uh, it's it's not a boss area, so it's just a side. Exactly, area. so I, I kind of forgot about it during the development. I a think we just put the outside song for a lot of the maps. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of the songs were it kind of uh, wasn't like made specifically for areas. Was were they they just kind of. Work. Yeah, they they are all one type of jazz, and then I guess we just place them where. Well, so some, uh, are, I, some are obviously made specifically for areas, but I think yeah. I think some are were more. Well, original. there aren't that many subgenres of jazz, so I couldn't make <laughs> one subgenre for each each yeah. screen. I really like the background though, with the loop and. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah some cool deadly, deadly uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, if you talk enough to Rude Skater, she encourages uh, the Jenny trying to skate for the loop in the background. <laughs> and um, uh, tells, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, I is here as well, but we already covered him. He's not that interesting <laughs> no. this time either. And then, <laughs> then you meet uh, Little Dude and you fight him again too. Yeah. Before you go to her next turn. And the uh, Lemon Yemi is here again with a radical outfit. Oh, yeah. She has like a backwards cap and really cool sunglasses. <laughs> and mysterious skater. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and then you move on to the science lab. Mm -hmm. And that's a fun area because it has uh, uh, crafting, right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you meet uh, Flip Hero. What's he called here? Um, Celery Man. Yeah. Why is Flip Hero a salary man? Well, <laughs> I don't know. In his, in his uh, original game, he's uh, this stereotypical uh, hero. Like, he's a hero. It's what, it's what he does. So yeah, he's, here, he's not he's, really a hero since he's kind no, of made he's to a, be. Uh, he's a hero of the workplace here. He works uh, yeah. for oh, un right. unpaid yeah. overtime, and uh, right. he's the opposite of business casual man because he works very hard and takes his job very seriously. But but in Hero Core, is he actually a hero or is he just doing his like function? Um, because well, like a salary man well, does his function. Okay. Well, he's a robot, um, but uh, you could say he's a tra like a traditional hero who defeats the bad guy, I guess. Okay. So. It's not very interesting, actually. Does he has have his own will in, uh, um, in Hero Hero Corp? It's ambiguous, but uh, I, th I think I, he does. I kind of get the feeling that uh, he's, that he's the Hero made him to kill himself, yeah, the and he's, he's literally controlled by the player. So yeah. it's, it's um, kind of matters. So uh, Flip Hero, he talks a lot. Uh, he keeps calling the player a citizen, and he goes into a really long. Uh, uh, thing about how their database works in a really bizarre oh, yeah. backwards way. It's something about uh, if they want to update their uh, database, they have to uh, send a send a, like a send a post-it note via mail to yeah. uh, one of the corporate businessmen's sons, who sends a virus to the to their server, who that has uh, like a program that scans for that specific type of virus and alerts, and then I mean it's an entire extremely complicated chain of events and then he finishes with uh, so what happens if someone tries to update two tables at once we'll have the next intern solve that one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when you beat him he says P -p oh yeah uh, uh, what? <laughs> it means uh, problem between keyboard and chair mm. it means that it means that it's not a software <laughs> problem it's the problem is somewhere else <laughs> Uh, he, he's an interesting character because he he does the alchemy thing, the alchemy system. Mm -hmm. Combining cards. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was added quite late, I think, wasn't it? Uh, in the yeah, we have made all the base cards before we made all the, the combined the cards. combined cards. Yeah. So we made crafting because we wanted more cards. More cards. Yeah, yeah. I, I think maybe we we like came up with these crazy combination cards and they grew out of there. I think we needed more cards. cards. Yeah. Hmm. Some cards can only be obtained by combining, right? Yes, like mm. uh, Jenny Cat. Yeah. yeah. And fish bomb pie and the sneaky mm. Mm. Uh, Then there's the healthy weapon cards. They, a lot of people seem a bit confused about how they work. Basically, mm -hmm. if you take one of the regular healthy weapon characters and combine them with one of the uh, alternative evil mode healthy weapon characters, then you get the evil mode char version of the regular character. So they kind of go in this whole circle, <laughs> yeah. you can kind of get trapped in that alchemy cycle, mm -hmm. I guess, just getting health weapon yeah, characters. Just uh, destroying all your cards. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, but it, I think it was a bit confusing. But it, it makes sense if you played a lot of health weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and how many copies did that sell? Mm -hmm. um, no, no. Yeah. Next character. Mm. Uh, then you meet the failed experiment. Uh, it's the pancake enemy from Italy one. Yeah, uh, no need to go into that. Um, but I uh, think uh, in the in the background ambient sound you can hear how that thing is made maybe because <laughs> there's some electroshock therapy screams and stuff in the background audio. I don't know where and, where they're coming and from. The, the the pancake only speaks in Swedish K words. Yeah. yeah. Is this courtesy of uh, food? Yes. All right. Nice. Yeah, all these words, so uh, he just speaks in single words, all beginning with K in Swedish. And they're all like kind of old timey or mm. rare kind of yeah, Swedish we, words. Yeah, we, we started making lists on the whiteboard of like uh, underused uh, mm -hmm. Swedish words, uh, starting with this letter <coughs> like B, B mm. for, for like Bulta. Yeah. <laughs> but in this case, we only picked the ones starting with uh, K. K. Yeah. So you'll just have to take our word for it that they're funny. <laughs> Believe us. The song in this area is actually a reference to the Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy. Mm. Uh, I think the first battle theme has a similar baseline. Mm. I don't know if anyone ever picked up on that. But. Hmm, cool. Speaking of, uh, of um, other, other tunes, you talked a bit before about uh, some song being extremely similar. To some, yeah, there. To go on a tangent, the casino uh, area we talked about in the previous episode uh, has a song that actually sounds pretty much exactly as one of the Sam and Max themes from the early Sam and Max games. But I have never played those, hmm. um, so I don't know how I accidentally copied yeah. the song almost one to one. It happens. <laughs> but it, it's, it's but it happen. happened. Yeah, it's happened someone in, tweeted us and said like, "Hey, yeah, someone mm -hmm. uh, put a comment in the SoundCloud and, right. and just put a link in." And <laughs> There's also this obscure Game Boy Color game where a character looks startlingly like Yanni Frog. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, it's mm -hmm. like the frog suit and the red hair and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just looks a bit more human, I guess. Yeah, but that's still, really that's weird. We should, really we should paste weird. that uh, mm -hmm. uh, screenshot of that game in the YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, even even our hair pokes out the same way. Yeah, yeah it's. I've never seen that game before <laughs> in my life. But uh, besides, I the design from Yanni Frog. I didn't even make that. It's based on your tiny sprite oh, yeah. in Little Lucy. The temporary yeah. sprite in the prototype. Yeah. Next, there's a scientist in this room. Uh, it's Iosa from Iti. Yeah. Iosa the yeah. immortal. Iosa the invincible is. Oh, the, invincible. Uh, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, she is uh, very funny because um, in the original game she's this genocidal maniac, but uh, here she's a scientist. Mm. Yeah. She also takes her job very seriously. Uh, <laughs> so pretty much the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> these uh, these characters that were deeply linked to mm -hmm. Daniel's games, like Small Boss, uh, E.G., Scientist, and Pitch. Uh, I had Daniel sketch them first for mm -hmm. me, so we'd get them right, and then I'd. Uh, paint over the sketch and Antonify them. Yeah, so they, yeah. they fit in. And, yeah. But um, I've noticed that your styles are kind of, uh, you know, you you can you can draw the same things now. 
Like if, if we compare like five years ago, maybe you have different styles, but I think you've like learned how to do that now. Actually, I almost never draw at all. <laughs> You did draw some characters for Psycho today. Yeah, but then, then I try to mostly. I try to copy your style as much as possible. Mm. Yeah. Um, for that game. Yeah, yeah. it's an, I think it was an easy style to copy. But uh, your new strawberry game has a very very Daniel feel to it. Mm. I mean everything. Well, I pixel arts are very different. You have kind yes. of new. You have kind of pastel colors. Yeah, and muted, I, I have very colors. strong colors and, and stuff. Uh, all my games are pixeled, so I almost never draw nowadays. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, you you fight Ayusa and you you go into the back room where uh, Cyber Master is. Yes. Mm. And now he's that guy. It's uh, Jenny Deer. Oh. Oh, from Little Do. Yeah, in, in Little Do she's super into science. No, yeah. no. magic. Damn, magic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Cybermaster is super into science instead. Right, mm. she's yeah, very she's, science. Uh, she's like the opposite. Right, right. Mm. Uh, she has this one liner in, in Little Do. It's yeah. like, are you magic? Exactly, mm -hmm. and in this one she's like, you're the least science <laughs> champ I've ever seen. Or something like yeah, that. she can check her email with her hair. Yeah. So my plan is that in CCN2, Cyber Jenny will be like a mage or a cultist kind of a <laughs> demon worshipper kind of. Instead of uh, aiming to become a robot, she aims to become like a supernatural creature. Yeah, because Cyber Jenny in Isolu 2 and Cyber Master in Cursed Knights are kind of similar. Yeah, so we have to differentiate them. Mm. Do. She wants to become a fawn. <laughs> What? <laughs> like a, a, a oh, say, say Oh, actually, I've, I've already drawn her, and she okay. looks more like a monster from Power Rangers. Later, it proves. And in uh, yeah, in this room, there's like a ton of experiments on cards. <laughs> oh yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. So since since uh, they're made, <laughs> making the they got the. Uh, uh, alchemist thing. I was thought well, that th that's where they do the like gene splitting and the combination mm. yeah. uh, things on the cards. I think but she's the one who asks whether it's eth ethical to eat cards. <laughs> yeah, the, it starts to get weird. <laughs> the the ba back rooms in in the in that room aren't as as like uh, weird as the poster in the in the other lab the caps danger caps out caps out oh. because that, that that's a joke that doesn't even make sense in Swedish. <laughs> How do you even translate it? It's stupid. You, you can translate like, it. It sounds kind of like keep out but it means caps uh, out. Ca cap? Cap out? Yeah. Yeah. Throw your hat away. Like if you have it in your back pocket <laughs> caps out. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. It's nonsensical and I was probably tired. Yeah, it's, there's also a drawing of Itzel Dill with like one bone in her body. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's <laughs> actually accurate. Yeah, yeah. that's canon. <laughs> yeah. uh, and after beating Cybermaster, you get a legendary. We won't even try to guess the legendaries <laughs> because we're, no. we're super wrong. Uh, and Jenny Lemon appears wearing 3D glasses because that's Ooh. science. <laughs> a mysterious so scientist. Very science. Yeah. Uh, and then you move on. To where? To bear mine. Yeah, that's a cool area. Ah, yeah. mm. Kind of reminds me of a game jam game we made. Oh, mm. I wonder which one. Maybe bear mine. Mm. <laughs> I actually like that game. <laughs> me too. Has a good song and some great it's swinging mechanics. It's one of those games where it's perfect to put into Coach's Nights because whenever players get there, they most people haven't played bear miner, so they have no idea what's going on. Mm. There's this man on a, on a pair welding a pickaxe, and if you listen closely to the background noise, the bear is actually sleeping, and sometimes it grunts and he stops picking, then he very carefully starts picking again. <laughs> <laughs> so the bear miner, basically, it's a, it's a small jam game where mm. you swing around uh, and mine a bear. Yes, yeah. you mine a giant bear out of its bear before the other dwarves mine it of its bear. Yeah. Uh, it was made uh, during the first ever no, no More Sweden, yes. right here in Kovde, and uh, we drew uh, no, like uh, single words, like mm. we, I think we got three words from a hat, and mm. two of them were bear and minor. And the, the third one was, you have to. Ah, you have to mine the bear. Yes, cool. <laughs> so yeah, we made a bear mine again. 
and a fantastic song from Eric. Oh yeah, he made that song using nothing but his mouth. Mm. <laughs> Why doesn't he it's make songs for older games? He's, um, he's amazing. Uh, he's also... I want musical was, numbers in it to do. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a band called the Snorting Maradonas, I think. Yeah, I actually... Um, I think it was them, I don't know, but I, I went with him at one point and played drums with this punk band and, and it was the first time like I was behind real drums. Mm -hmm. I've been behind you know, plastic drums, but uh, I never got a return yeah. invite. What did you do with one of the members of that band? What's, what's that, sorry? I went to school with one ah, of the awesome. members, no. so it's kind of a weird... Sorry, that's pretty cool. It's so that, really small, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, in, in that game you uh, have a chain axe, uh, just like Bear Miner in uh, Carter's Knights, uh, he's the protagonist. And uh, yeah, you attach it to this giant bear and swing around and kill everyone else. Um, it's uh, such uh, yeah. It's, I, I, don't, I don't even. It's great because the sound effects are all um, taken from a sound pack of like realistic human <laughs> death screams. So when you like fall, fall off the bottom of the screen and crack the uh, the spines of deers standing in the way, mm. so they start crying. <laughs> it sounds extremely nasty. Mm. So that's where he comes from. So what what other guys yeah. are over in the bear mine? First of all, you meet the bumptious miner, who mm. is uh, Orca from Half Weapon. Mm. Orca is everyone in Half Weapon is like a Swedish word or like a saying. Their yeah. names. So Orca basically means like bothered. I, I can't be bothered with this. Mm. It's like mm. it's a it's like a single word that means to have the strength to do something. But it's said kind of ironically, yeah. like who who would have the strength to do that? Yeah. Like, but in this game, she's a strong, enthusiastic miner. Yeah, she in her, mm. she's kind of like she's in her weapon. Like yeah, she a, punches people with uh, with melons. Me melons. Mm. <laughs> but here she's a bear miner, a bear miner assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't really do much. She she's she becomes mm. much more interesting when uh, with the card gods thing mm -hmm. later when she interacts with. Epithet again. Uh, and there's the bear miner, of course. Uh, he's kind of retroactively fit into the Remorverse or the the sort of Garden of Carnage Princess Peach universe. Yeah, because um, when I made Hyper Princess Peach, um, I, um, Princess Peach is a character from Garden of Carnage uh, who appeared in the house. Uh, and eventually in a minigame in that, inside that house. Then when I made the game Hyper Princess Peach, I created a new character, uh, Goddess of Explosions, who is her mother, uh, who is married to Bear Miner. So uh, the canons merged immediately. So uh, that's why Peach consists of one half explosions and one half pile drivers. Mm. So in Cards of the Nights, um, Bear Miner is married to a fiery woman, who is the Goddess of Explosions. And Peach does appear in this yes. scene now. She is their daughter. Yeah, she yeah. she comes by to say something to Bear Miner. I think. Yeah, she's borrowing the candle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something like that, I think. Uh, but then you move on to because he doesn't have the legendary, so you have to go to see oh, yeah. his wife. Oh yeah, there's he a plot it. twist. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the real detective part of. Uh, so you have <laughs> to go to the House on Wheels, no. which is another bizarre area. Based yeah. on Garden of Carnage, everything is on wheels. Not mm. only the house, but the <laughs> the bushes. Nils, Nils yeah, it's the uh, trailer park with uh, the tree. Yeah. The toilet is on <laughs> wheels. The mailbox is on wheels. Yeah. The burning because, trash can. Because, yeah, I think the only only thing uh, only like Gerlin had was like uh, make the house on wheels. <laughs> made everything on wheels. And, and the only person there originally was um, the garden gnome. Yeah, no, the, the, bearded, the bearded, stranger. bearded stranger. And my notes mm. here only say, not that much to say here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, on, the only interesting thing about Bearded Stranger is that when you lose to him, uh, he gives you a pro tip. He's the only character who, if you keep losing, 
Yeah, it gives you different pro tips. Mm. You, if you lose 16 times, he says, you're not very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is something I don't think anyone has I ever seen. No, because he's not that difficult at <laughs> all. No. <laughs> the, these pro, pro tips are inspired from Garden on Carnage, yes. where we had pro tips uh, scrolling over the screen. Uh, all this dialogue is from, uh, is from Garden on Carnage, um, isn't it? Like the well, it's inspired. Game, star, game start. And yeah, it's yeah. inspired. And he only speaks in extremely short sentences, which are like references to Garden of Carnage mm. and there's also um, we added with the East Raft it, we added yeah. Kulshik to this Kulshik. place she is one of the best characters her, her deck is amazing her tactic she we <laughs> made her after we realized how good offense was I, I set out to make the the most anti offense deck I could think of mm. so she, her, her cards are near invulnerable <laughs> kind of because she uses, she kills off her own card that causes all her cards to be revived if, if too many of her cards are taken out. Or things like yeah, that. she is very difficult at this point in the game. She even tells you, uh, it doesn't, you don't really have to beat me now. You you'll just get some money. Yeah, her so. her lines are all awesome. She's like uh, handing out money to people uh, <laughs> because yeah, it's uh, like the Easter, Easter thing. like it's like the Easter bunny, but it's she. Eggs are kind of passe, so she hands out money, and she'll see there all year. Yeah. Did, so did we make new cards for her deck just to make her so good? Um, no. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. Oh, there were there were like two or three cards added in the Easter update, but yeah, they're not very. She special. doesn't use them, I think. They're not very interesting. Uh, I would like her to appear in a, in a real little game mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think she's uh, cool. Yeah, she is. So she tells you not to take advice. Chicken Jenny. Yeah, mm. Chicken Jenny. Mm. Why, why did we miss that? It's uh -huh. so obvious. Yeah. And, the, and it's an easy, easy sell the rip off if you keep uh, mm -hmm. right. beating the beating <laughs> A swarm of Jennies, right? Mm. She tells you not to listen to, like, take advice from someone in a chicken suit. She's also. Um, um, she says uh, Smug Falconer is her girlfriend. Oh yeah, that's right. And they met because she looks like a bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Smug. area has a great uh, uh, ambience track again, uh, made by Frude, mm. uh, because you can hear the, I guess it's the bearded stranger talking to one of the local kids. <laughs> uh, they're helping him build something. And you, you find out he, he talks in Swedish. But you find out that they moved here because uh, this city is filled with card games and brawls, and he likes those <laughs> things, so he moved here. <laughs> he likes to fight and play card games. Who doesn't? Yeah. Speaking of the next character, mm -hmm. you move into the into the wheel house and wheels, and you meet the uh, fiery lady, ah. who is the goddess of explosion from Princess yeah. Peach. Except she's not allowed to blow anything up here, so... Um, yeah. She likes uh, dramatic card battling! <laughs> yeah, she works with explosions. Not demolition, just explosions. That's her job. Yeah. Um, and other characters have some fun things to say about her, like the mall, uh, the roof of the mall fell in once when she raised her voice. <laughs> <laughs> she's, this is like one of the major roadblocks for players, because yeah. she's super aggressive <laughs> and her deck is like the, what's good in, in Cards at Nights. It's Being, very fitting. <laughs> yeah, a, a quick and offensive deck. So a lot of people will get stuck for a while here. Mm. Maybe they'll have their only few losses um, here or something. And the pitch cards in the game are for some reason very good, so mm -hmm. and she has all yeah. of them, so... They're the br the usually the aggressive cards. cards. Yeah, and, and similar cards. Mm. Yeah. She is, uh, someone told me that uh, most of my characters are very emotionally extreme, like mm. the apathetic frog or goddess of explosions <laughs> or pipe snake. Um, Half of those are from like Whiteford Dukes, so they're yeah. very one note characters. <laughs> Maybe it's because we're so normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the goddess of explosions is, was really fun to do because um, as a goddess, um, currently the only one in that universe She's so incredibly overpowered that uh, um, she has fun all the time, because nothing can stop <laughs> her. Uh, you can summon her once during the game in Hyper Princess Peach with a special code. And if you play in the highest difficulty and go against the final boss, Mecha Santa, I get him into his like ultimate form, where he goes nuts. And if you summon a goddess of explosions, then 
he just throws up his hands like, oh no, not her. And then he dies immediately <laughs> because he explodes. Uh, is it is it goddess of explosion or bear miner who says that uh, their daughter is rebelling by wearing princess clothes? No. Uh, I think I think that's a bear miner. They they're very fond of their daughter rebelling yeah. even more than <laughs> than the goddess did at her age. Uh, and that's what she's doing. She's rebelling by being perfectly normal. Mm. <laughs> if by normal you mean looking like a princess and carrying around a cannon. Yeah. She's trying to learn how to carry the cannon with her own hands, like the goddess. It's the family cannon she's using. Yeah, and then after we beat Fire Lady, Lemonian is here again, disguised as an elf, like in, in Garden of Carnage, the elves are the, like the Santa elves. Ah. Mm -hmm. So she has a Santa hat. I forgot that one. Mm. And then we go to the dark alley. Mm. Mm, that's a fun area. It's full of sad trash. <laughs> yeah, what's with the sad trash? It's because, uh, like in in it of you and uh, and some uh, and uh, well, cartoons, uh, like in Italy, we did the whole trope with oh, it's a it's an item with with like eyes on. It's like, like a happy turnip, mm. and then we went with like the compost uh, compost queue <laughs> update. Oh, it's a decomp. It's like a rotting turnip. So obviously, obviously, even though there's like happy, happy lemons or 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 like apples or oranges, they will all like decompose like any other <laughs> item, and they will probably be like consumed or anything. So yeah, any any happy item will become well unhappy trash. Sooner or, or they're just uh, <laughs> that's one explanation, or they're just like. Uh, and and the, these guys are making a return also in it'll do too with their yeah they have all the trash yeah they mm. have the trash cave but are there are there trash with ice yes yes, yes. it's yes. full of them yeah, there's full of them <laughs> nice. they're just lying in the corner yeah. being <laughs> sad <laughs> with yeah maybe they're like yeah, and, 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 Maybe uh, they're, they're, the yeah, like the turnips and the end is yeah. the sad trash. <laughs> yeah. We also got the sad trash emoticon for Steam. I'm very happy <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to use that a lot. If you need to do two, that would be a great one to get. Yeah. There are actually um, um, there are three more Easter eggs in the background. Uh, there's a picture of uh, a Brutus, uh, the cactus, holding up uh, like a. The uh, lifting bar, like a weight lifting a dumbbell, yeah, uh, yeah. dumbbell, yeah. and um, there's uh, there's a picture of the cheese murderer, yeah, <laughs> it mm. says wanted, and then there's it's the been referenced in this podcast, cheese <laughs> murderer, <laughs> and there's a picture of um, there's a ninja in the background with it, who is kind of hard to see from Stefan's uh, oh, right. ninja game, which we haven't released, but uh, it's one of the many games he's made in his spare time. Yeah, Stefan is the, the other programmer who's mm. never been on this podcast yet. Mm. Yeah. He, he's a wizard, so he mm. couldn't be heard, picked up by uh, <laughs> equipment. We need magical equipment. He's usually credited as a wizard because uh, he does amazing things with our games, usually. Mm. <laughs> like, um, if you ask him something to do something, it's already done. Mm. But better than what you imagine. <laughs> And sometimes he just fixes things in Unity. <laughs> so what's his ninja game called? Uh, I don't. I think it's simply ninja. called the Ninja Game. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, it definitely has has the word ninja in it, but it's mm. a ninja knight or something. I don't ninja knight. I think it's just maybe. Nin no, maybe I don't know. He's also has a. We should probably release one, uh, you know, a Stefan game at one point. Oh, yeah, because he also has this UFO series. Mm. Like, if, if we are supposed to release one of his games, wouldn't it be the Depressed Man game? <laughs> oh, yeah, the Big <laughs> Gooba. Uh, depressed, depressed well, actually, um, um, Cyber Debater. Oh, mm. yeah, that, that's, uh, is, um, that's the bad. Which is the one of the games in the, in the, pro, like the Vine competition we had. Yeah. Actually, one his final UFO game, which was never completed, was like a copy of Ocarina of Time. Mm. Um, he made that way before joining our company. Mm. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, so in this area, there's three characters. Uh, they're not uh, super interesting to me, maybe. 
Okay, so let's skip them. But no, actually, no, they are, some people like them because are, uh, uh, I know people like the Jenny Fox. I said like yeah. I, I I like Jenny Fox, but uh, <laughs> some people uh, <clears throat> like something Jenny about Fox. these characters uh, in the dark alley. They they kind of what I don't like about them is that they appear threatening, but they're super yeah. non-threatening. <laughs> they're like yeah. really lame characters because they can't be. I I I had some fun with writing that because they look threatening, but they just want to play cards. <laughs> and uh, it turns out that the bruiser, um, the big uh, tough girl, yeah, with she's made like art from mm, health weapon. She's actually not that tough. Uh, she says at one point, uh, "I got all the best grades in school, but everyone hated me, so I took up uh, like um, Shane pineapple classes, and now everyone respects me." <laughs> and that's kind of messed up. <laughs> she also refuses to pick on. Um, Excitable student because she likes her. Mm. Yeah, in, in a way, she, these three friends. are like these three are like the nicest characters yeah. in a way. <laughs> they're friends. They're, with... they're 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 giving you like friendship lessons. And stuff. Oh yeah, because uh, Jenny Fox is also I think Cybermaster is her cousin. But uh, in it'll do. Jenny Fox is by far the the scariest <laughs> character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's uh, bananas. Mm. Yeah, she throws axes and here all she can do is play cards at you. I like I like her picture. How it turned out where she has uh, the knife and the card stabbed. <laughs> yeah, the, I was just about to say she looks really scary. Yeah, in, in Car City Next as well, mm. where she is gang leader. Yeah, there's lots of art, internal art of her. That um, yeah, they they kind of remind like there's a picture in it to do one's art gallery where she has a hoodie and it's kind mm. of yeah, cats. yeah. Oh, maybe that's that's kind of the basis for her mm. here. That's where it came from. She's holding a skull as well. Yeah. <laughs> So, and uh, Princess Peach is here, mm. called the kid. Mm. She, um, she, um, the only difference between the real Princess Peach and this one is that this one doesn't have a handheld cannon. She has like mm. just to lug it around. Oh, so she's wheels, she's not really on a mission or anything. So well, she still has a cannon. Yeah, she she rolls mm. around the cannon. Yeah, <laughs> like cannon. on the ground. <laughs> Uh, and she's more of like a teenage, uh, teenage girl here, like rebelling, mm. hanging with yeah. the cool with the, kids, the bad, the bad kids, mm -hmm. or the good kids. Yeah. All right. Uh, I so guess you get the legend there here, or do you? Is this a boss area? I'm not who sure. Knows. Ah, who knows? Who knows? No, um, I think this is actually an intermission before the next part. Yeah. Which is um, you can you get a hint here that you need to like uh, check oh, out the yeah. frog or something like because, that because uh, you meet uh, a mysterious um, you actually meet Jenny Ooh, Lemon yeah. for the first time and she looks mm. like a thug here she mm. has like a skull scarf and uh, no, I uh, think piercings she... and safety pins in her hoodie <laughs> I, I'm not sure if this is the first time she reveals her true self. And I don't remember, but she sneaks a note into her pocket which says to go to the Turnip Corp and say Ardwolf, oh. which is a reference to uh, Wolfenstein 3D, because uh, there was one texture hidden in a huge maze in that game where it said uh, call Apogee and say Ardwolf, but people texture hacked the game immediately when it was released, so they had to discontinue that uh, competition, hmm. <laughs> which was a shame. <laughs> I miss those old games with like phone lines you can call. <laughs> of course, yeah, they're, thinking, they're not live anymore. I was of thinking of adding something like that in our games, like mail us, and but it would probably turn into a chore. I'm pretty sure they did that for Hotline Miami, or at least uh, the sequel. Oh, oh yeah, kind of fits with the theme. We yes. have released a game that has something like that, mm. but I'm Don't not sure if I'm gonna say which mm. one. Okay. <laughs> Give me a hint. Don't, don't, I, I don't, don't, it has to do no. with Matthias. Oh, wait. Like, I, okay, I was thinking of something else. Haven't yeah, we had sure, yeah. our GPS coordinates in one game? Oh, yeah, uh, in Muri. Uh, actually, at the, end of, <laughs> so, at, at the end of the first episode, uh, uh, there's a character called uh, Easy who um, her suit sends out an SOS signal, which is actually the GPS coordinates to my office where I wrote <laughs> Muri. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a super secret where we are. I, I no, once, it's not secret. But I no. once gave out the email address to our printer <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> and uh, we got some funny ones. Uh, but one was uh, uh, turned out it was a screenshot from Google Maps, but it was it was uh, like a, looked like a photograph of our house or building mm. in a very menacing way, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was, was kind of fun. But so it was. It's easy to find our address. 
I also added that in because um, it means that the whole second episode of Murray takes place in a post-apocalyptic uh, Shavda. Mm. <laughs> or is it a call for help from you? <laughs> yeah, or is it a call for help? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, give me a hint. What's the hidden thing? Uh, it's a game that we sell physically. Right. Mm. There's um, a secret, a secret mm. code somewhere. That gives you something. Oh. If you find it. I don't know if anyone has found it yet. Though. I, I think I know someone who has. Okay, did um, he use it? I think so. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it. No. We should, I guess. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to the turnip core mm -hmm. for the second time, for real this time. Mm -hmm. And the turnip is there and whatever, but most of all, the business casual man is there. Oh, yes. One of the best characters we've ever made. Yes. yes. He was supposed to get his own game originally, but... Mm, uh, but I couldn't figure out a good gameplay um, for him. He needs one hell of a game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the gameplay so far was incredible. You just walk right, punch people automatically, because yeah. he swings his arms and you walk over their corpses. Set to Matthias' cover of uh, the soundtrack to Anticipation. Yeah, <laughs> for the NES. I mean, <laughs> and he walks in sync with the music. Yeah, I, I thought it was really funny. I, th I thought it was good. Yeah, but it was like a 10 second game. Yeah, we, we should still release it. But uh, Business Cashman is the only one in the game who has his actual name, because his name is what he is. Right. Yeah. He's a dude with suspenders and pants and a necktie around his waist, and that's it. Hmm. Where, where did this design come from? It's a white board, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the, it must uh, be a white Actually, it's, uh, it was from, from my sketchpad originally, oh. when, when I borrowed your sketchpad for, for like a did week you, or something. Oh, did you draw the tire? Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it wasn't the original, but, but, but I, think, I think his like, weird neck had design <laughs> uh, made it into the design on the whiteboard because, mm. because he, he got some revisions on the whiteboard. Yeah, he's a um, risk, risk character to put in a game because of his necktie. <laughs> it's suggestive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But um, as long as you make sure it looks like who, a necktie. Who hired this entirely, uh, <laughs> entirely hairless man without a shirt and uh, the tie on wrong? <laughs> Maybe he wasn't as casual when he started out. Yeah, he, um, he has a lot of funny lines. He, he only speaks in buzzwords and like things related to avoiding work. He asks you uh, whether your boss is looking, and uh, if you say no, then yes, he says, well, just yes, continue playing. If you say yes, then he says, uh, convincing that um, this is a new graphical interface <laughs> for, your, for your app. Uh, so he does nothing. His uh, specialty is uh, overpaid under time. Nice. And his card in Cards at Nights is mm. really good. It's incredible because it mills the other character's deck for some reason. It's like the stack of pancake card, but you can have three of them. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah, and it just lies there milling turn after turn. Yeah, he's great. He's also in Italy too, um, which is not a secret because we've showed him, but um, he, he, he is himself there as well. Yeah, if you go he's up always and himself. 100%. Yes, if you go up and look at him, it all says something like, uh, I thought this guy was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> you got his canon personality in yeah. Court, Court City. Yes. Uh, and then you go another step deeper into the corp uh, and you meet the airy tycoon who is mm. a delicious, delicious turnip. Mm. Mm. The so lich is in, instead of being one of the uh, bosses in Elodie. Yeah. So instead of being undead, he's like uh, on life support. Mm. Ah, yes. He's very old. Mm. He keeps uh, complaining about the young people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he also has one line where he... Uh, and he's kind of decomposed, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. He, has one he line. still looks undead, mm. like in Italy 1, except he has, he's still got the oxygen mask and stuff. He has one line where he complains about young people with very old-timey words, but then he reveals that he looked all those up. <laughs> because that's exactly what I did when I wrote. <laughs> uh, and it, there's a plot twist here. Car mm. Fiesty man, uh, business casual man, he, he like... He's, he implies that there's going to yeah, be a twist. He, he foreshadows this. Mm. And then the twist happens. 
And what is uh, it? Uh, it's that Yeti Frog has been drawing the cards. Oh yeah, Root Skater is the uh, adopted the granddaughter of um, of Delicious Turnip, or rather um, the Eerie Tycoon. The Eerie Tycoon, and she's the one drawing, drawing all the cards. So she's not just a graffiti artist; she's a professional. Um, but she uh, doesn't want to talk about it. So everyone thinks she's just some random skater. <laughs> Uh, she wants to keep her uh, street cred, yeah. I guess. Yeah, thanks. It's kind of it's kind of like an Italy run that she she she's kind of a street, but she works for a like, man. rich guy anyway. Yes. Oh yeah, I, I think she's not paid either because um, someone says that surely um, the exposure is enough. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> And Lemon Yenny appears because this is a boss battle, so mm -hmm. Lemon Yenny appears and she has leaves on her head and a tie. Mm -hmm. It's a mysterious turnip, I think. <laughs> I love these Lemon Yenny outfits. Mm -hmm. They were a lot of fun to draw, I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you head over to the, um, the tournament. Yeah, the stadium area. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is also kind of a different area. Or yeah. I like the background here because it has uh, a crowd of hype snakes <laughs> and cheerleading yeah, yeah. yennis yeah. and stuff. <laughs> this this background is sort of repeated in Psychard, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like a dystopian version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the only inspiration like a reference. Yeah. There's two signs here. One says play hard, play card. Yeah. And the other says card or die. Yeah. <laughs> so they're very they're very hardcore about cards. Here. Very card card. Card card, yeah. <laughs> So here, this is different because here it's uh, you play more matches, right? Mm -hmm. How does it work here then? Um, so uh, you meet the biggest fan who guides you through the whole thing. Um, he's this uh, super nerd who knows everything about the card game. He knows so much that I have to delve deep into uh, my notes about... Uh, I have this huge spreadsheet mm -hmm. with all the data in the game. He knows all of it. <laughs> By heart. Yeah. Um, it's like he's memorized the frame data of a yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> but he gets a fruit and it's built like you're, tur you're in a tournament, you're climbing up the ladder. But the twist is that um, you have to defeat two people, people in a row, which is more difficult than before. But if you fail, um, the, um, the bouncer uh, from um, the, secu the security guard from the big chest who is there um, just shakes his head and and hands you a note that says you have to replay the matches because they were illegal. Mm. So no matter, you can't lose. Uh, uh, it turns out much later, um, if you lose at least once, um, in the very final boss battle, Jenny Lemon reveals that she was the one rigging all of it. Mm. <laughs> but she will only say it if you lose at least once so the, the characters will notice it. And the characters you, you cool. face in the tournament, they're all like leftover characters that you've met mm -hmm. but haven't fought, like the Green Crystal uh, Bob, who's called the tourist, <laughs> and the intern. <laughs> the tourist? The tourist. So, uh, he's tourist, because he's so in he, space. But he's... <laughs> okay. I, I never yes. caught that, but he's the clerk. Yeah. Oh, that's a, oh. He's the clerk. When I researched this, I looked at the, uh, the design document. Mm. So he's oh. probably changed names since then. Yeah, he was a tourist because he has a Hawaiian but shirt. Is his, uh, yeah. Maybe he's called a tourist in the... No. no. Is it another Bob? No. no. Is there a clerk no. and a tourist? Oh, okay. yeah. Or is this the same brother? <laughs> How can he be a tourist if he has well, put up shop in this town? He's been, he's been stuck here, he crashed his ship. <laughs> yeah, he's, he mentions that. Haven't you played Bob Came in Pieces? <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I think. Yeah. And the biggest fan, his, uh, his sweater, it says Kutspiel, which means card game. <laughs> yeah, it's, he, he has no idea what it says, but he, he bets he's really cool. I actually I actually have a, a, a t-shirt with Japanese letters on it, and it's I have, a, I have no like, idea what it says. It's like chicken and noodles. Yeah, probably. <laughs> And uh, you meet the little dude here, and he's like on the verge of giving up his whole card to yeah, play Yeah, because it's like a deconstruction of the rival character from Pokemon. He uh, apparently, he's not as good as he thought he was, so after this final match he quits. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, uh, he's pretty cool with it, and uh, he starts, he has a new challenge, he's gonna collect one of every card instead, mm. <laughs> like Pokemon. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, from his house, he already knows. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's training for more... Uh, in, oh yeah, yeah. You, you fight the biggest fan, and he's, he's not really that difficult, I think. Mm. He's, yeah. yeah, there's a scene I kind of like where... So there's this uh, hard to notice quest line that's in the background. Every time a new um, act begins, which is um, after each intermission we fight little dude, you can go to various places like the school or the mall. It doesn't the, the map doesn't blink, so they're hidden. But if you go there, you get to to chat with an um, excitable student, and she talks about uh, what's going on in her life and such. And uh, there's someone she likes that she wants to. Uh, talk to and uh, it, regardless of whether you see these hidden scenes or not um, at the very end uh, before you fight the biggest fan uh, she calls out to uh, little dude right b right before he's leaving and leaves together with him like it's a very small scene but mm. it's kind of like the romantic subplot which doesn't involve you it's <laughs> mm. <Yeah. laughs> I can't I find it pretty charming yeah that's nice um, and this is the last regular boss, kind of. Mm. Now you move on to the end game. Uh, right, so you have, all, you have all eight legendary cards. Yeah, so you go to yes. the big chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the bouncer lets you pass. Yeah, you just battle him, then you get to the card king. Yeah, and the card king is Ethan from Little Dude, obviously. Mm. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Instead of uh, like a hook arm, he has uh, like a robot hook <laughs> arm. <laughs> In, the, in this background, uh, we need to talk about that uh, turnip <laughs> peeling himself. <laughs> so he's a tough guy, what about it? <laughs> the the uh, turnip the is so hard. Yanni reaching for a gun. Yeah. yeah, it's a very threatening atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, have, have we mentioned that Nils make uh, splatter B movies in his spare time? <laughs> I don't I've think never had anyone peel themselves. <laughs> We have a similar scene in It'll Do, and the, like there's a prison at one point, and oh, she yeah. says, "I don't even want to know that." Yeah, is. that there's uh, in the um, warped woods, um, the, oh, right. the area, the sacrificial altar. Yeah, the, the cultist area. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a sacrificial altar with like a Ouija board and uh, um, like a book with I don't remember what it says, but it's like hex. Or yeah. A, then but there's a knife in the field. The, uh, the whole set is setting that came in when we discussed about the boss that she was like obsessed with mm. magic so I threw mm. in different like magic related things including like a sacrificial art yeah. there's a carved uh, up there's a carved up turnip there and some buckets with things in them and yeah, it makes sense since Jenny Deer is from, from a time when Jenny's and turnips were like a war. Oh yeah, there's this, uh, the, there's this backstory to the game with the Jenny turnip war and uh, uh, there was a stalemate and... Uh, this is... Uh, is this, was, was this all kind of my fault, this 1000 year ago thing? No, I think it was you and me both because uh, I made the outline for the credit sequence. Yeah. And uh, I pictured... Uh, <laughs> I pictured uh, Yenidir standing uh, on a stair, like, have you seen this really old Warhammer glorified pictures of uh, their leaders? And uh, Yenidir was standing on a stair holding out her finger because she had just like uh, shot a uh, delicious turnip with a, with a spell, like a bolt from a finger mm. in this really dramatic fashion <laughs> and uh, stole his shield. And um, that's why she has a shield in the boss battle. It's, it's, like, it's actually yeah. his shield. There's this oh. obscure side plot through what yeah. we to do, which uh, no one cares about. <laughs> the, the turn there's the, there's the whole credit sequence is the, contains the backstory to it to do, and then there's this carved uh, slab of stone, which, among other things, contains the um, right down the, the, on the balcony. Yeah, the, uh, there's no. a lot of stuff. There's a Yeni tiger and um, a Yeni bird. Uh, we, should, we should have like a whole little do one podcast. Yes, sometime. definitely. Uh, and there's also a lemon clad Yeni peeling a, <laughs> a turnip <laughs> with a with a cheese slicer. <laughs> and that's where Yeni lemon comes from. She's murder. <laughs> You know, I usually search for games like on the internet, and once I found uh, a really lone uh, Reddit post that just said what happened in the Jenny Turnip War. <laughs> <laughs> no replies. <laughs> no replies. <laughs> they all died. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah, it was a thousand years ago. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so the lemon, uh, the turnip is peeling himself, and <laughs> the card king is here. Yeah. yeah. The ga gangster office. The card king is kind of nice, and mm. uh, yeah, he's really he, re he loves the card game. Mm. Uh, I love the um, the battle song here as well. Mm. It's really good. Mm. The the location music is made by Mood Basics. Yes. Uh, a friend of ours. And it's actually one of my favorite songs from him uh, in this game. He made two others, The Cave and something else. Mm -hmm. I, re I remember when you sent over the first hip-hop remix of one of his songs and he thought that was the way it was going to go into the game. Uh, so he w I, I remember him was like, uh, okay, thank you. It's like he was really upset. <laughs> that way, that I destroyed his music. Yeah, you just, uh, is, that, is that it? It's like, no, no, both are going in. Both are going in. So you beat the card king, and then it turns out there's this plot twist where um, Jenny Lemon has. Um, they played a friendly match before, and uh, uh, she secretly had all the legendaries in her deck without him noticing because she never played them. And uh, she also had copies of tons of rare cards. I, but I, I find that hard to believe that she could play the game good. without showing this. She, she's good. <laughs> she's really good. Uh, because she had, she helped the player along to um, study their playing tactics so she could beat the card king in secret right before you arrived. So she has won the prize. Hey, maybe she, she challenged the card king, mm -hmm. but she didn't win. She just uh, played. I mean, she did win, oh. actually. But uh, he didn't notice that anything was off with the deck. Uh, so she said, then the card king says, uh, like, another twist that, uh, but now there are two contenders, so you have like 24 hours to beat her or something, which is fine because it's, it's, uh, always, uh, it's always night. A lot mm. of things get kind of uh, <laughs> contrived here at the yeah. end, but yeah. uh, that's the part that's of the, the charm. Like, that's uh, the funny thing. Yeah. It's yeah. super contrived. <laughs> It's super good try that, and the, like the card king is seems to be yeah. kind, of, kind of like playing it up just to amuse mm. himself. It, he's enjoying it. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's kind of, kind of <laughs> like the jolly jolly old man of a yeah. gangster boss. Ethan uh, Ethan Carr in um, It'll Do was also kind of jolly about the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, so it's similar. He, he's like in this, he's designed the card game, and in the do he's designed the dungeon. So he's like mm. a game master kind of character. Yeah. yeah, and then you have to fight Jenny Lemon, who is very difficult. She is insane, especially after a patch which nerfed some um, aggressive yeah. cards, which she doesn't use. But apparently, you can still beat her even if you have one HP and she has ten. I, I don't know how that's possible, <laughs> but apparently it is. But uh, she cheats. Uh, you probably hard. use a lot of Young Lich's turn. Mm. A really good card. And uh, I wrote when I when I told Anton to build the deck. Uh, it was like she's cheating, so she has duplicates of rares, and she has one of every, each legendary. I'm but not that, sure. I, I, I think I made. Matthias made oh, that. you made it. But I did. I, I, I made all of the decks before mm. the yeah. alchemy cards. That's why. Mm. The alchemy cards aren't uh, visible in the normal com combats. But I didn't normal battles. All, all the regular battles, and then yeah. in, in, all the update battles are me. I think. Yeah. But I didn't expect her to have that good of a deck. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. She likes that the ruby card that links to itself yeah. and uh, both gives defense and damage. And then I find it really funny that she just sort of breaks down when you defeat her. She's the only one who uses it. There's a thing you can do with a dialogue in this game to change this tech speed. Mm. And she uses it when she screams, No! <laughs> really right. slowly. <laughs> and she has to break stuff. Is that the, the only place we use it? Yeah. <laughs> the battle theme, by the way, um, this is the only song that has two remixes. Uh, so it's the location and the battle against the card king. Mm. And then there's like a uh, electro house dance style version of that uh, remix because Hotline Miami had just released and I had played that and I was inspired by some of the tracks there so the final battle is more mm -hmm. Hotline Miami style than the rest mm -hmm. of the game. Cool. I also like her dialogue when uh, you just speak to her normally while she's just standing there. She says like, why, why the sour face? <laughs> <laughs> she's extremely full, full of herself. Lemon mm. is great. She's in Psychord as well. It's one of the few references oh, yeah. to the Ludoverse. She doesn't say anything though. No, she says nothing. She just appears in a, in a tournament. And she she yeah. has a special power called Haha. -ha. <laughs> That's <laughs> she appears, really annoying. She appears in a tournament where you play... The, lo the locale is a cult worshipping an eldritch god. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, uh, and when you beat Psycho, there's the credit sequence, and uh, you look at the, they're watching the TV, and one of the reports is like, "Have you seen this woman? She doesn't belong here." And then it cuts off, and she's. Uh, Speaking of credits, the credit for Card City Nights is also amazing. <coughs> oh yeah, <laughs> because I am... Um... You get ranked on your, <laughs> your yeah. ability to play the game. And, uh, and I, I was actually referring to the song. The song mm. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, love, I love the... Everything is good. Yeah, everything is good about it. Uh, Daniel, you, you animated this business casual man works. Like yeah, the thing... Um, first, when you, get your, when you get your playing rank, you, there's only one rank, it's business casual. <laughs> and uh, I think people, some people wondered, like, how did I get this? <laughs> what, what are the other ranks? <laughs> but it's just a stupid joke. And then it cuts to um, me spending like a whole day animating, drawing over the original sprite for business casual man. And while he's walking. Up. Yeah. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm wondering, in, in if we, if we make a CCN2, should we have uh, mm. different uh, ratings, but they'll, they'll be like really <laughs> difficult to obtain any different ones? I think they should be based on invisible triggers, and yeah. I'll be really stupid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like normally you become like business casual or something, but if you've done this and this and this and this, then you... <laughs> yeah, there's no logic. You start up the game and then exit it like you within a second ten times. <laughs> Uh, I think we could mention a little bit about Card City Nights 2, or we cut it out. Let's talk about it and maybe cut it out. Uh, yeah, finally we should talk about the post-game, mm. the card gods, that's the final thing. Yeah. yeah, we did a big patch with the four card gods and rematches with all the um, legendary holders. Yeah, you go visit uh, the Ittel dude and... Uh, there's some cute stuff with the uh, <laughs> uh, excitable student, and uh, he's like come to terms with being bad at cards, I guess. But, uh, A chump. <laughs> <laughs> and he tells you about these uh, other players who use cards that are no, no longer legal. Like in Magic, there are cards that you mm. can't use anymore. Yeah, like legacy cards. Oh, yeah, they have a completely different look to them. They yeah. are hand patent and uh, have a different they're, border. They're, they're inspired by these terrible <laughs> looking cards from the past, like... Uh, like the old, first sets of yeah, magic with the... Marble uh, patterns and yeah, bevel, the bevel uh, some thing. O- some old Pokemon cards. Yeah, all these old cards were from the 90s and stuff. They're still pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, uh, Surely. The four gods, by the way, are a reference to the street fighting <laughs> to the gods, yeah, I think. Possibly. Uh, I saw it that way, at least. Uh, maybe. From, uh, well, the uh, there are like uh, a couple of Japanese players that are called the, the 2D gods of fighting games that oh. are the best almost yeah. in every 2D fighting game for some reason. Oh, they okay, are. Yeah. Hmm. And have been since it's like the a, 90s. A bit hmm. of a meme kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. hmm. uh, but uh, first of all, uh, Two Faced Boy. You meet him outside your house, mm. and he uh, his personality in this he's based on Boonie from mm. Boonie Bon. He's mm. like a humanization of the bunny from Boonie Bon. <laughs> it, it doesn't really come through in the game Boonie Bon, but Boonie is not that nice, or <laughs> he's he's at least not that much better than the the he's funny. He's kind of an imperialist. Just mm. yeah. he's just taking back space from these uh, skull <laughs> things. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. All of these characters. He likes candy. <laughs> he likes candy, yeah. All of these characters are fun to write. Yeah, so Two Faced Boy, he, he. He alternates between being um, overly nice and uh, like speaking his mind and uh, being. Very colored. sugar hyper, kind of. Yeah. Oh. And also his. Uh, he wants to break into your house and live there. And yeah, eat all he, has, your... he has a dark side. <laughs> yeah, you, and eat all your candy. He's creepy, so. Yeah, he's kind of creepy. What's his uh, beta card? Um, Boonie Beta? Yeah, Boonie Beta, which is uh, a 3D version of Boonie, yeah, because yeah. I was I was making a 3D Boonie, so this is just a print screen <laughs> of that game. <laughs> and the beta cards uh, also have different backgrounds, yeah. so yes. to, uh, different frames. Yeah, but we yes. just... Uh, mm. And that's kind of a reference to, like, I guess, Pokemon Trading Card Game, because it was uh, they have made weird sets in that yeah. game with, 3D, yeah. with like, clay. Uh, clay and, and like, bait. What's it called? Uh, marzipan mm. yeah. oh, right. sweets and Pace, stuff. Pastry. Pastries and stuff. They have made sets and they have made sets with 
crappy 90s 3D <laughs> models yeah. and were they deliberate or were, were they just crappy? I think they were just crappy. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I think they I think assigned they to, a new person for each set to yeah. be the main designer, and sometimes they just did some I weird think, stuff. I think with a three, they just wanted to capture the uh, basic shapes of the Pokemon. Like they're like they're pretty basic and recognizable. Maybe yeah. that's what they're thinking. There's one set that's just crayons, like mm. written, drawn by a three-year-old or something. <laughs> Uh, Two-Faced Boy is uh, the second character sheets outside of uh, Yen Lemon. Mm. Oh yeah. He's, he never shuffles his deck and it's, set in, it's in a set order that's uh, beneficial to him. Uh, but he's, he doesn't end up being that hard, actually. I, I said last time that he uh, top takes uh, like a god, basically, <laughs> because yeah. he always has the same card. Mm. He's got a kind of a defensive, indirect attacking deck. Uh, but he's not that great. Um, um, next guy? Yeah, yeah. Smug Falconer mm. in the, the she, cave. She's another favorite. Yeah, she's... She's Jenny Bird from a thousand years ago. Yeah. Is, is, that a, is that a typo? Isn't it Falconer with two E's? I have no idea. What's no a idea. Falconer? I, d I didn't spell check this uh, game when I wrote it. This is just my notes. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's... Uh, but is it... Is she a falconer? She has, yes. she has, oh, she she has falcons, except they right. they look more like they are weird dogs. pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> they are pigeons. Yeah. They are named uh, Lotta and Carola. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, some the, Swedish uh, yeah. humor again. The, it's uh, well-known uh, Swedish uh, pop singers yeah. from, from like the past, uh, from yeah. like from the eighties, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and um, she's always eating uh, the nuts in the bar because the pigeons are stealing them for her. Mm. Yeah. Uh, her deck is a milling deck. Mm. She's uh, pretty dangerous if you're not yeah. prepared, I think. She your ca your cards can just run like mm. uh, explain like explain for milling for me. Mm. Yeah, Matthias. Uh, it's a when you remove the deck the cards in the deck of your opponent mm. so that they don't have any cards left to draw and most card games have something negative that happens when you don't mm. have any like cards left lose, to draw. You lose immediately when you're out of cards. In this no, game, no, not in this game. Case immediately. No, not immediately, but... Um, you well, like, like maybe damage. it's three or four... Hours. Every time you need to draw your hand, you lose mm -hmm. health based on yeah. how many cards you would have to draw to get your hand. Yeah, and, and when your and hand which, is... Which is five, the, so... so. Isn't when you have zero cards on hand and zero in the deck, then you instantly lose. Yes. Also, but that's no, difficult. Okay. That's uh, is, is, that a, is that a rule in magic? If you can't draw a card, when you must draw a card. Then you lose yes. magic, and in Hearthstone you take one damage. Mm. And, and yeah. And Smug Falcon also has. Uh, Did you say no, Smug Falcon? <laughs> I thought you said Smug Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, like, um, all of those people taking screenshots of her dialogue are not going to believe me when I say that uh, I, I was totally innocent when I wrote her dialogue. She's actually talking about her birds. Mm. Yeah. And, and Daniel is an incredibly <laughs> innocent person. <laughs> like, she is, actually. She talks about her amazing birds. <laughs> and you can touch them, but yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it was actually not intended to be in Wendo, but uh, when people commented, I thought, well, <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> mm. uh, in in this game, Jenny Bird's personality comes across because we've been mm. like, uh, it's been developed outside games. I yeah, guess. like if you look at her card in Cartridge Nights, she has a mm. bird on her head doing a little dance. Yeah, <laughs> pointing uh, at it. Yeah, I guess she has. Uh, she's kind of she's very proud of her birds and very smug. Yes. That's her character. And, and Where her is she from? Uh, she's in it to the one, but very briefly. In the there credits. In the credits. In the oh, credits. In the credits. No, there's also a grave that says, uh, oh, yeah. Here lies mm. Jenny Bird. Someone got jealous of her birds. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Jenny Tiger died in a toothbrush accident. Yeah. And uh, her beta card is a uh, bird, which, uh, has <laughs> which, uh, which has a faulty uh, yeah, this flavor. Is one of the, I think the art on this card is amazing. It's, mm. the, it's the only card drawn by Nils, or the mm. other cards are drawn mm. by me. And there's just uh, all these Yenis reaching for a bird that looks mm. uh, terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> and the flavor is incredible because it's randomly generated every yeah, time you look at the card. card with like special coding for it? Yes. Yeah, because we couldn't decide which uh, flavor. We had several puns and stuff. So I just programmed it that every time you look at this card, like every time the card needs to reload, then mm. it picks a random one. Yeah, so it's a hack, but it's a very funny hack. 
Yeah. If, if anyone noticed it. Yes, yeah, so people have noticed. noticed. Okay. That's Some cool. people, maybe. And the last one. No, no just two. Two more. First, the uh, bookworm. From oh, yeah. Moody. Oh, well, she's a bit hard to explain. She writes fan fiction and she's from <laughs> Moody. <laughs> she's also from. Uh, and in she's in from a game we made after cards, yes. or yes. at the same time, yes. or yes. something. No, there are okay. cards in this, yes. All right. Oh yeah, there, there oh, were yeah. even before her. She was a character in. Yeah, I don't remember if the game was actually released. But was it Murray in development for? Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. Mm, right. yeah. This character is like the secret boss of Murray. Yeah. So this is an extremely hard to find. Wait. Right. This is um, a relation to between Cards and Knights and Murray that's probably the hardest to notice <laughs> because it's kind of obscure. Um, in Murray there's this family of scientists and, there, uh, and the kids and there's also a friend to the family called Inkiruka. Um, uh, and it's very difficult to know what she looks like yeah, except there's, uh, in that armor. There's something in the game called the Anti-Murray who uh, stalks the player at random throughout the game, but can never be fought. Mm. And she also appears in a secret news broadcast saying that the Auntie Marie may not have been and then Wait, it just can, cuts it off. can't be fought? No, uh, that's the thing. If you play on Muri difficulty, the highest, and get to the final level, there's a warp. Yeah. And then you actually get to fight her, and it turns out that she's uh, Enkirka, who uh, the main character seems to recognize because she calls her by a nickname, which uh, very subtly draws the implication that all the robots in the game are actually humans <laughs> turned into robots. Mm -hmm. So she has to kill her. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that if you meet and defeat this bonus boss, um, at the very end there's a picture of all the, the cast in the game, but like normal, mm -hmm. they're out of their suits, except for, um, except for Kojo. You never see him outside of his suit. And if you defeat this bonus boss, there's a little inlaid picture of human in, in Kiruka. Yeah. And that is Bookworm. Yeah, that's who, that's who, <laughs> this, her look is, yeah. Yeah, is based on this tiny yeah. thing that you have to unlock in Ruby. Yeah, the, all the names are um, African uh, Akan names. Mm. Because there's, yeah. And she holds a book that says Space Mars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the uh, movie takes place after Mars has disappeared, so. Yeah. Uh, she writes fan fiction, and mm. she her deck. I can't really remember what it's about. I think it, I remember it's being pretty difficult. Her beta card is the worst beta card, I'd say. It's not very useful. Yeah, it makes you invulnerable for one turn. No, no, yeah, I it's don't not, remember. It's not as great. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, she has a lot of great things about this podcast mm. about fan fiction, and she says, like, for example. Um, uh, I'm writing my own novel right now, but um, I need some more original characters first, and uh, I, I let you re read some of my fanfics, but you're too young. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to pair up all the characters. Mm. I saved the best card got for last. <laughs> right. The frog fan. The frog fan. Mm. Yeah, apathetic the apathetic Jenny. Apathetic Jenny from... Yeah. Where is she from? She is from the card in Card City Nights. <laughs> that is the apathetic Jenny. That's um, the first instance. Of if you cross a Jenny, would that is pretty meta? Yeah. So this is she's a patch for yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's from from her own game. <laughs> from the game set. No, she's from the game of her own yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> so she's standing around in the bear mine in all places. Yeah, looking at the bears that are being. Mind. Yeah, she yeah. uses quotation marks just, in there. And, you know, yeah, she uses random quotation marks. Mm, there's, she sounds sarcastic, but it's really completely random mm. <laughs> what she places quotation marks around. She talks about a lot of a lot of weird things about uh, the universe and the apathetic frog. Yeah. And, uh, and the, if the universe, the the apathetic frog exists beside the universe, if if the universe noticed the apathetic frog, it would stop. <laughs> I like to think of it like she's a, she's a fan of the, mm. the apathetic frog, but she's not she's not like a human embodiment of the apathetic frog. No. Uh, she's still like a human. She has all the merchandise. She has feelings and stuff, but she has tries to be. Yeah, she tries to be like. She has all the She has all the merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> One day she might like reach Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she's trying to do. Her, her shirt just says why. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 
why not? So the Atomic Frog uh, is apparently at this point some kind of elder god. Maybe that's the uh, the other patch, the upcoming yeah. patch. Mm. Mm. Actually, to I'm not gonna say too much about the planned story for Cards Unite 2, but um, mm. he um, oh. things happen uh, regarding <laughs> the Atomic Frog. Fan appears. I've already drawn her. She yeah. looks uh, great in her green, like, uh, plastic suit. Yeah. But strange things happen once they start uh, meeting stuff like the Upper Valley Frog out in space. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And Frog Fan's uh, beta card is the, uh, an, a beta card of the Upper Valley Frog. Mm. Um, that's yeah, like, right. uh, it's hand-painted frog and uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember instead this. of what's the use, he says... Uh, How's the juice? How's the juice, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They hadn't really gotten his yeah. personality <laughs> down on the car seat. <laughs> oh, and uh, one of the one of her best lines is like, uh, "There was a legend about the origin of the apathetic frog, but no one could be bothered to retell it." <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and the, the best thing happens when you uh, defeat her. Um, so she just stands there, staring into a brick wall, apparently during your fight. Uh, and uh, she says that, well, now we just wait until the universe stops, until then, everything stops. Then she just finishes with a whole bunch of... And the dots. bumptious miner appears yeah. and they, they want to throw her out, yeah, but they she, can't move her. She told you to throw her out, but um, she's just going to do it herself, but she can't. She's completely frozen. <laughs> and uh, the Apophatic uh, Jenny says, like, um, I want the, the laws of physics are beginning to halt and I'm one step closer to the apathetic frog. And then the player decides that this is getting too creepy. <laughs> yes, her, her god has granted her like the, the, the miracle, like the power of nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the laws of physics are growing apathetic. Yes. <laughs> uh, she's in the Remedy too, by the way. Oh yeah, she is. So you can date frog fan. Ooh, cool. <laughs> That's my feature, pitch. <laughs> feature revealed. Yeah. Yeah. Remedy two will have oh, dating. No. You can date people. You can mm. date people. Is a very um, yeah. broad word. <laughs> 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 very generous. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> yeah. So that was it for Card City Nights, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Great game. Good game. Oh, what a good game. <laughs> you should buy it. Who made it? <laughs> All right, uh, thanks for listening. Hello. Bye. Bye. Hey, Rob. Bye. Ciao.